Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've upgraded and traded out my Adonis for a Hinderman. That's much better. Thank you. I appreciate that, actually. I was about to say, hmm, where's this going? Well, you don't have a red button to slam on me. <laughs> We've also upgraded our uh, replay system, so you might see some fancy replays this time around. As we get into our next matchup, AFK versus Cognitive Gaming, we saw some of the fastest games the SPL has ever seen with Ego versus Team Solo Mid. AFK and Cognitive have a... They've, they've got to step it up if they want to match that. Well, I mean, it's going to have to be fast-paced because that was start to finish both games <laughs> very, very quickly. Fast inhibit, sorry, fast Phoenixes, fast ends. And if there's any team that could do it, it's going to be AFK. Number one on top of the standings for North America. They're sitting with just a single loss. Kiki Sochiki, Incon, Allied, Weekend, and Cyclone Spin. All familiar names. And familiar is the one thing that they don't like to do in terms of picks and bands. They like to mix it up a lot. Come the corner in the jungle was last time round. We also saw the Hades as well. Big frontline tanky composition they had. They're really loving the Cumba right now. Will we see it again? I think we just might. We can tweet it out last night that he's going to perfect the Mbop, which can only be the ultimate coming out of the the, uh, the Kumba Karna, which is actually interesting. Eager and AFK, their squad, their, their scrim partners, Naja Kumba Karna, Kind of do the same thing in the sense of what goes up must come down Kumba and wait for it at the bottom. Kumbakata has the best setup in the game, and best setup of the game for Cognitive is DJ Pernicus for the most part in the jungle. He's always looking for the most part to try and set up his team for the big plays. DJ Pernicus and the best really have combined for a lot of that, and setup coming out of Aurora as well, although usually by way of damage, support player Aurora really likes to play aggressively. Kabam uh, generally... Ties things together. Despite being the hunter, Kabam really is is winds up being the glue. Uh, you don't really see him killing it as far as in the front He's row. He's very quiet, is why I want to say. Exactly. Very, very quiet on what he does in a role. But what he does, he does well when he goes off and makes it work for the team. He winds up being the shepherd, honestly. When That's you see Kabam, it. you have to walk away because he's a hunter. And you walk directly into the damage that comes from the unconventional picks that Cognitive likes to do. And as we have Cognitive versus, versus AFK right now, we're going to see a couple. So... May we please see the P's and B's? Kumba Karna, will it get banned? That is the question. No. <laughs> you don't ban Kumba Karna, Hindu man. You, we may start seeing it, I'm just saying. No, we won't. Why won't we? I mean, well, on a serious note, I think that Kumba Karna did fantastically for AFK in that last matchup we saw, but I don't think that it revolutionized the game. I, I don't think that Kumba Karna is the end-all, be-all for the squad. He's got a lot of potential, though. He has a lot of control, a lot of setup for his oh, yeah. team. And if you can do that time and time again, that's what we can kind of transition to uh -huh. once they brought Cyclone onto the team, right? I mean, he used to be very aggressive with the Assassins. Now he's molded into this sort of, I will set you guys up. I will be the supportive jungler. Yeah, I mean, both of these junglers on the side of AFK and Cognitive Gaming are really known for their... their warrior jungles. There are Cabrakens on the side of DJ Pernicus. Well, and one you. One you as well on the side of DJ Pernicus. He's not quite happy to that. But he'll go exactly. to Thor, he'll go to Sir Ket, but mm -hmm. Sir Ket, Cognitive banned out this time. So no Sir Ket. Also no Hades, says Cognitive Gaming, so they don't want any of that going on. Geb, going to be the first pick for AFK, so Incon going to be playing that very standard support. And I think that's why they've banned the Ares out as well, is because they wanted to yep. get a good, safe, defensive support that, you know, we used to see in Incon, and the one thing about Incon that you always know is that he's very, very adept at getting kills even on very supportive gods. Also, just don't give Aurora Ares. <laughs> That's really not something you want to do. We saw this earlier today come out as well, where you pick Odin and you pick Hell at the same time mm -hmm. to stop the full-on counter pick of being available. Take into account, though, if that Odin is support played, that is very, very tough for a Geb to take on. Aurora, again, me mentioning the fact that Aurora, one of the more aggressive supports in the world of Smite, Odin might be an option for him to take into that long lane. Isis can no doubt find herself in the center, and Thanatos, well, Cyclone. Normally, Thanatos is found in the jungle. Normally, Thanatos is one of Weekend's favorite characters to play. Normally, Thanatos... Is played as a direct counter to a lot of junglers. But normally, Cyclone Spin had one of the highest killing games in the SPL on this character in the solo. I was going to say, normally, he doesn't build Heartseeker either. <laughs> but we'll see if Cyclone does it again. Guan Yu locked in for Cognitive, though. And that may go to DJ Pernicus once again in the jungle role. It can be very good in the support role as well against the Geb. Has a good matchup there and can put pressure on consistently against Geb. I absolutely like Guan Yu in whatever role he winds up being in. I think that he is the quintessential warrior in that he's got an initiate, he's got a slow, 
He's got a stun off of his initiate. He's got some healing. He's got some damage. He's got a little bit of everything and nothing too high in either column. But what he's able to do is just tend to the wounds of the team fights. Couple that with a, with a hell. Nobody is going to die in these team fights if everything goes right for Cognitive. Amazing amounts to sustain. The most scary thing for me is that NA seem to not always ban Kepri every single game in the first ah. stage. It did get panned out in the second stage there by AFK. They don't want to deal with it for Cognitive. And they were worried that that Odin might have been, and even Odin and Guan on the team, they still thought they might go for Kepri's support. Well, AFK Gaming here, they're going to pick the Kali and the Neath. So with no natural healing reduction, AFK is really going to have to put a lot of investment into those specific items. We're going to see weakenings. We're going to have to see Divine Ruins, maybe Pestilences, maybe Beat Sticks. We need to see much because, as I said, Guan Yu and Hell, it's just a... Too much healing. Even Freya can self-heal. I mean, AFK, they've got a lot of burst damage here. The problem I see with it is their front line feels a little bit slack. They've got yeah. Geb for the front line. But then they've got Thanatos and Kali, who are 50-50s, as I call assassins for the most part. They'll come in for a little while, but then they have to disengage. Well, unless it's a... they can pick up those kills. If they can pick up those kills. And that's the story here. The story is in the soil for AFK. They need to go head on. This is all in. All in. What's going to happen is Isis is going to drop a circle that Thanatos and Kali can fight on. And we'll get kills and we'll keep going. And as we get into our game, Wait, we'll take a look second. at who's playing who. And it's going to be weakened on that Thanatos, leaving the Kali into the solo lane. Now Cyclone Spin, he's known as that solo lane carry. We'll see if Kali is able to do that. I don't know what the matchup's going to be like for Kali in the solo lane. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Hold that fort. We already see, see first blood. Kabam walked out. Kabam went down. Weakened. First blood. And you don't want to give that a Thanatos. Oh, on a Thanatos. That's going to be rough stuff coming off for AFK. Well, we DJ can... Pernicus is going to be playing on that Guan Yu, as we said. And everybody else should be relatively similar to what you expected. Going Re back to the solo lane, though. Kali versus Meerkat on that Sun Wukong. Cyclone's going to be sat under his tower a long period of time here, and you're going to have to play this very safe. This Lash does a lot of damage. Lash can clear the wave pretty well. What, compared to Jingo Bang? They both have Bluestone. We'll see how the Bluestone works is the question with the Lash. I mean, the dot, dot, it's double dot damage. Right. There. I don't think it's going to be enough to clear the wave as effectively as level 2 Sun Wukong can. I mean, Mobility sure. limited as well <laughs> on a Kali compared to Sun Wukong, so Meerkat should be looking to abuse his rotation ability with that transformations. I'll agree with that much. As we see our two assassins clear the jungle just a little bit, weaken on the Thanatos, finally pops the red pot. He gets first blood without the extra additional power. Good Cyclone's point to make as well. Red Pot on Cyclone Spin as mm -hmm. well. He's begun this game with it too. So he will help his way to play a little bit more. Exactly. And uh, actually quite a quick clear from those two in that side. They actually beat the Warriors out there early on. You kind of expect that with a Thanatos, however. Now, the Thanatos is a good pick against this Guan Yu as well because Talo Assault uh -oh. won't actually be able to be used. If this Scythe lands and it yeah. doesn't, that would have been very problematic. But I as I said, we can able to just silence out. And the thing is, the hell is in the mid lane there. But, oh, look at that. The pressure onto Meerkat early. Mm -hmm. Surprise, it went that way. He did get to lane early, though, Cyclone Spin. So those minions will do some decent poke damage. It should trade back out now. One thing that I know Meerkat's got to be happy about is this: with this Kali pick, we won't be seeing the Mystical Mail. Meerkat really hates the poke, personally, that happens with that Mystical Mail. So on the Assassin, we're not going to see such a defensive build as we normally see, keeping in mind the Osiris's and the... Sun Wukongs that we saw last match between Team Solomon and Eager. For the Kali, much more aggression. Oh, we just found out who Kali's target is for this game. It is going to be Odin, I believe. Yes. Was that Kali's mark? He was, wasn't it? it yes. Wasn't, yeah. Definitely Kali's mark. Well, there's going to be two marks now. It's two Thanatos marks as well. As and a Kali. Like, Although I believe that we don't actually see the Thanatos mark until level five when the ultimate is online. Ah, they, well, you should know. You do play quite a bit of Thanatos. Don't he, you? Is, he is my most played god. That is very true. <laughs> and you still don't win on him. How is that possible? Oh, I do. Meerkat, under pressure from Cyclone again. Surprised that lane's going so well for Cyclone. I think Meerkat's given a little bit of respect to Cyclone. Probably of more course. than he probably should, though, is the issue. Maybe. Then again, Cyclone's been on a hyper carry. That's his home stadium, so you got to be careful about what goes on there. Slow coming out onto DJ Pernicus. AFK trying to separate him and the hell. If they can get in between these two characters, they should be able to secure a kill. Well, they get some pressure onto DJ once again, but a quick heal from Bess brings him up a little bit more there. You can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to slowly stall the wave out so they can put pressure on, but they're trying mm -hmm. to get the dash out of DJ so they can confirm the damage with the Scythe, with the Spirit Ball. Not able to find it for the time being, though, and Pernicus pops a health potion. He should be fine for now. Now, here's the thing. DJ Pernicus, when he plays this Guan Yu jungle, winds up staying in the mid lane for a long time. Thanatos doesn't want to do that. 
It's up to Weekend to decide if he wants to rotate out, stay here, or do what he's doing here and just surprise the enemy team. Well, just know he's already level 5 as well, so when that's down to the first blood, we see that Kiki's also just hit level 5 too. Meanwhile, Cognitive a little bit further behind at the moment, and this is the benefit they've got in this game, right? Duo lane, very, very strong in wave clear with that Neef. Solo lane, you can leave Kali to her own devices. Mid lane, mm -hmm. Isis and Thanatos, you're going to out clear a hell and, you know, alongside a Guan. <laughs> Without a doubt, the Isis, one of the highest wave clear in the game, especially early on. Wingus providing so much damage onto those minions. Dual back out of the solo lane. That's pretty much the, okay, <laughs> both players understand that you're allowed to do so. And it went boots. Full boots, Warrior Tabby for Sun Wukong. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, Cyclone chose to invest in just boots to it and pick up those important beads. Very important for Kali to have those beads as well. Sun Wukong has a number of tools to get out of jail. He's got he's got transformations, whether it's a stun or a knockup or even the bird. He's and, and at the end of the day, he's got a free life. He's got an extra an life extra with life. the ultimate. Kali, she's got a delayed death mechanic with destruction. She, she doesn't have to die in, the, in that time period, but she can still be CC'd. She can still be stopped and then killed after the fact. Beads, very important for Kali to pick those up. A shame at the start of this game that Cognitive gave up that first blood hit because so far so good for them in my eyes. Uh -huh. They don't want to, they just want to weather the storm for the early game. Obviously, like I said, the lanes are going to be very aggressive here. Cognitive just have to weather it, allow their warriors to get online, their three warrior compositions, exactly. and the help to get a couple of levels and items. And you were so scared about the Thanatos getting the early kill, and yeah. rightfully so, but Cognitive has been so smart in not giving this Thanatos an inch. Because if you give first blood to a Thanatos, an inch is not even a mile, it's 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 a kilometer. It's so big. Is a kilometer bigger than a mile? Yeah, it is. Yes. Only just. <laughs> it's about 1.2 miles. I got scared halfway through saying that. It's about 1.2 miles. I We work in miles in the UK. 1.2 miles? I think it's about 1.2. Is it? Wow. Well, I guess things are just bigger when you drive on the wrong side of the road. Europeans use that. They drive on the right side too, after. No, no, no. We actually drive on the right side. Y'all drive on the left. No, no. I drive on the left. You, you get yourself confused. You're making yourself look stupid to Europe now, after. <laughs> Again. <laughs> you meme. It's awful. 1-0, wow. though, in favor of AFK <laughs> at five minutes in. The, the thing is, you expect to push up and put the pressure on, but they're not finding picks. Not going to be allowed to back <laughs> here oh. is Meerkat. The knock is strong, but the silence is stronger. Up in the cloud goes the Monkey King. Where's he going to go? Because Thanatos can go up to the sky. It does, yeah, Thanatos is in the sky. And look at the timing here. Has to come off of the cloud. Meerkat will get a heal. And the support from the team is enough to send Weekend packing. And look Very at the support that decision. was there. It was Pernicus and it was a raw. Mm -hmm. A raw could have pinned him. Even if they'd lost Weekend, so even if they would have lost Mecha, right. Weekend would have been trapped in the circle because he couldn't have escaped it after he landed. And they would have traded that one back which out. They, which... Make no bones about it. That was a dead solo lane. Weaken intelligently decided that he didn't want to die as well. A little bit of the poke from Weaken there, but the shield absorbed it for a roar for the time being. So the aggression subsides once again. We roughly sat at about, look, to take up the gold for us for a minute, it looks like we're just under 2k already in mm -hmm. gold difference. And experience, they're just farming so much better, AFK. Exactly. Now, AFK does have a 500 gold head start because of the early first blood. But even still, take that away. You've got 1,100 gold. Mm -hmm. they got, well, they've got the mid harpies to begin with. Right? Well, we're also, seeing, we're also seeing multiple lanes, not just mid lane, but also in the side lane, we saw it freezing the wave. And pushed to the tower as well, which denies if the, the tower hits it, you don't get credit for gold there. So they're just trying to abuse it. And that also means that the jungle is doing a good job of sharing as well in the jungle, just to continue that lead. Thanatos going to find a roar in the middle of the jungle. The problem with Odin there is what Weakens doing. Silence means you can't leap, and then straight into a scythe means you've got no shields, so you're not doing any damage. DJ's here, and the rest of the team will come from around the side. Best is a little bit slow, but we can able to get out of there no problem. Now, Geb stuck in the middle between three. There's an ultimate to take stuck. two, but but Weekend eliminates a roar with a single stuck. scythe. He wasn't stuck. He was waiting. Now Weekend's going to go up uh, as well. Well, we've been down. down. Don't in. Pernicus falls too. Scythe connects onto Best, but he should be able to heal up some of that. There's no Cataclysm available. Great knockback from Incon. Knocked up is the Best. Oh Stunned and shot. Kiki so cheeky gets credit for that one. The Best falls down to his enemy mid laner. And very quickly, four kills are on the board for AFK. Cognitive have yet to find a kill. Three in the matter of seconds there from an engagement that Cognitive were the ones looking to take. They were trying to pick Weaken, and in the end, it spun on its head completely. One of the things that I really liked there that, that was fun to watch, Weaken followed Incon. As Incon rolled out, Weaken followed him so that the Freya pulses weren't able to hit him too much, which allowed him to stay in the fight. Well, here's a big play, Blinken, and the 
ring as well. We can trapped inside here under a lot of pressure, trying to turn the damage oh. back. The leap will secure it. Meerkat picks that one up. Meerkat being over here has made an impact and finally Cognitive finds himself a kill. That ring hurts Thanatos a lot because a lot of what makes Thanatos viable is not just the heal that comes out of the scythe, but also the heal that comes out of the kill. I'm, I, I was sitting there thinking, if Weaken got one more basic attack on Odin, he would have gotten the kill and the heal. But he was stuck in the ring. He wouldn't have gotten the heal. And Cog going to try and roll in, steal this one away, but Cog do secure it. Good use of the ultimate from Incog, though, to get the Cataclysm, but immediately Cog disengage, and they get a big win off that one pick on Weaken. Veteran play by Cognitive Gaming. It's very easy to find a kill and be a little bit afraid or, or, or be a little timid as for going for the objective. Cognitive says no. They get a single pick and go directly oh, wow. for the Gold Fury. Oh, wow. What a big win for them there. And look at that. Highlight over the top. Is that Kali's mark? I always want to say yes. Yes, that is Kali's mark. It definitely is Kali's mark. There you go. It's a Hindu symbol. I should know that. I should know Hindu symbols. That's right? Sanskrit. Oh. Mm-hmm. You go, boy. In the jungle, we can look for the speed buff, but under pressure now, has to ult away immediately. Circle of protection used defensively. We can does find that kill on Pernicus, as the Will Weaver was coming in as well to secure from Allied if required. And it's very fun to watch Thanatos defensively ultimate and then offensively use it while he's in the air as the situation changes beneath him. We can picks up another kill, 4 1 and 1 on this jungler, Thanatos, who, as we said, reminder, Got the first blood in just before the timer even started. Well, we're in negative AF time. AFK trying to compete with Eager for one of the quickest games <laughs> of the season, at least in North America. I believe it's, the record is held at Europe at the moment. Right, and Cognitive says absolutely not. AFK was off to a start. The kills tell a great story, but Cognitive, with that one kill, was able to capitalize successfully and pick up an objective, the Gold Fury, which takes the lead down to 1,400. It it was much larger, and it could have been, but Cognitive says no. It could have been worse. And one thing to know about the uh, Odin going back to that as well, you said about the ring against Weaken. Don't forget that ring also reduces attack speed. The longer this game mm -hmm. goes, the attack speed is going to be much worse. Kali. To Kali as well. Ooh. It's going to be an impactful. Yeah, the, the attack speed doesn't bother Thanatos too much. He will basic attack just for some extra damage, but it's really about the Kali weakened stuck in here again. He won't heal from the death side. Down goes the ring because here comes AFK. Jingu Bang just barely allows the weakened to survive. There's an ultimate coming out of Incon just to stun out the enemy and a successful defense out of AFK. But while all that was going on, what happened on the other side? Cyclone Spin combined with Ally to bring down Kabom on this side, and I'm pretty sure they got rid of the target for Cyclone. Who's now? on the right side of the map. Cyclone Spin has been That's in this duel play for so long. They were fighting on the right hand side here. The team rotated but Cyclone was the one that came in. He was looking for that pick. He mm -hmm. wanted to get the mark off of Freya because it's a difficult target for him to yeah. look for in team fights. Ally picked up the kill there but it's not a terrible loss for them sure. because now the mark changing to somebody else will be more impactful. Thanatos going to go drop his red buff for his mid laner. Kiki will come up and pick it up. And Thanatos just continuing to farm himself crazy. 10 to 9 for the jungler levels, respectively, on Thanatos and DJ Pernicus's Guan Yu. So many shoes of focus I'm seeing here as well. Uh -huh. Picking these up, we've seen multiple supports starting to transition to these now and again over the Talaria boots based on situations. Well, when it comes to Geb, I absolutely love it. There is no situation where I don't want more Geb shields. When it comes to the Talaria boots, yes, it will be able to keep you up. And we actually see the swing. Odin actually leading uh, above the Geb despite not building Talaria boots himself. But as I said, more Geb shields is always welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's important. I mean, the, the shields are important. The gold is very, very useful, but it's also the mobility. Now, the benefit is, I guess, Geb doesn't really need it with the rollout. Mm -hmm. and has the opportunity there. Generally invest in Blink. This time, though, fast weakening curse coming out for Incom. I mean, this is, yes, Obvious. obviously, <laughs> of course, duh, for a throwback term. You need the weakening curse. You've got a Guan Yu, you've got a Hell, and people always forget, Freya's passive is 15% lifesteal. Yeah, and she's going to build lifesteal as well anyway. And in the jungle, though, DJ does get caught. Eats a scythe, eats a spirit Stun. ball as well. That was a Slow. huge spirit ball. Damage. He's on the horse, but it doesn't matter. Kiki's so cheeky. Cuts the legs out from under him and sends DJ back to the base. Weaken comes down. Weaken gets the kill. A roar. Also going to fall. The pop. And everybody's back to full HP on this, the side of AFK. This could end quicker than the Eager game. <laughs> I mean, the it just going. might. But as I said, with all of that, down seven kills, 12 minutes in, Cognitive only trails by 3k. Only 3k, well the tier one time on the left is getting pressured now. Meanwhile Cyclone happily free farming there as Meerkats had to go back to base there. Tier one falls. 
top player damage? No, that's minion oh, kills. Oh, that's minion kills. 126 on Carly Cyclone, who, let's be honest, we just said he rotated all the way to the other side of the map. Wow. And he's yeah, still top. Uh, that on that is a surprising look for me because, as I said, Kali was in the left lane more than once, and we're not that far into this game for that to be allowed, basically, and he's still able to successfully find farm. Sun Wukong looking like he wants to stop back of Kali, but not going to let it happen. Him. Big key for me, though, is the amount of gods that are being influenced by this blue stone. Now, mm -hmm. that's the big key. How do you mean? Like, well, Kali in the solo lane, you don't see it that often, sure. but she starts blue stone because it helps impact. Gold Fury started by Cognitive Gaming and it immediately sends Weekend into the sky. He's going to find a target. He's looking directly at hell. Silence out. No more heals, but the heal is already strong enough. And the best, able to heal up and walk away. Back flipping out of the situation is Allied, and from the back comes Meerkat. He's going to have to be careful if Allied wants to get out of there. Well, the sustain comes out from Cognitive to heal them back up again. But they didn't really waste a whole lot there. Only Kabam used the Valkyrie's discretion. Meanwhile, the side of AFK, a few ultimates down, and maybe they'll regress. I would expect this to come out of Cognitive Gaming. Most importantly, they still have Aurora's Ring, which just neuters Weaken. The Thanatos can't do much. Because keep in mind, every time Thanatos uses his ability, he's spending life. And that's why he, Death Scythe heals you so much, to balance that out. He can't heal himself up in that ring. And that really hurts himself. Cognitive Gaming have the Gold Fury very low. Spirit Ball's not going to get it, but the Bird Bomb will. Cognitive Gaming gets Gold Fury right in the face of AFK Gaming. He's going to fall down to the best. Meanwhile, on the backside, we can swing around, but he's not got much. Cyclone in amongst it gets bursted down. Had ultimate available, wasn't able to use it. Look at the healing out of both Hell and Guan Yu. Everybody is still ready to fight. Two people have died. Allied going to be subject of everybody at the moment. They'll let him live. But Cognitive Gaming take the gold for you. And two kills for their troubles. We talked about how much this game was in AFK's favor. Look at the gold. It really isn't. Really, really close. 200 difference. And take into account as well, AFK did take that tier one time on the left, which mm -hmm. is another 500 mm -hmm. gold boon. Add in the fact as well, the first blood was a 500 gold boon. Well, technically, Kog are doing very well to come back into this one. AFK is coming off on a tear with straight aggression, and Cognitive is answering with smart play. Such smart smite being played here. The understand again, it's very scary in a world with no hog to start a gold fury. But between Aurora's ability to lock out the opponent and some of the bursts that comes out of the hell to, to take out the gold fury and the bird bomb, Cognitive Gaming was not scared in the slightest to just take the gold fury in front of AFK. And the longer the thing is, the longer this season goes on, the stronger and stronger cognitive gaming start to look. They're finding these games mm -hmm. under the belt. They're working together. They're understanding each other's mentality of how they play. And it's really working for them. It's the same situation as Eager. Or much different story, but a similar situation in the sense that Eager has Omega and Polar Bear Mike to join the longtime members of the squad. And we're just seeing them now sort of work together and come online. That's what we're seeing out of cognitive. I remind you guys every single week, this team had not played a game before week one of the SPL. And it's worked out for so far. They've found themselves mid-table for the most part, still in contention for a top six spot to get themselves to land. I mean, even potentially challenge for top four. There's not a week that I haven't seen Cognitive Gaming play better than the prior week. Every single week, this team gets better and better. And don't forget, I mean, they're against AFK in this game right now. And they're 15-1 mm -hmm. and one this season. Only dropped that one game to Ego, who was sat second. And right now, Cognitive are doing what they can to stay in this one and actually hold a bit of a lead. Like I said, I mean, the, the Cognitive Gaming squad, they hadn't played together. The best hadn't played competitively in a long time. DJ Pernicus hadn't really done it either. Meerkat struggled on the old cognitive roster they weren't really doing much so a lot of these players were either previously successful or never really seen success themselves coming together with new squad of course it's going to take some time well this is the result of that time i always feel as well though with afk's game though when we look at the, the compositions they've always got a very good balance of mid early to late game very transitions true. all the way through and the longer this game goes and i'm like well cognitive doing well so far but then you've got this ticking time bomb <laughs> set in the solo lane that is slowly farming away. Well, I mean, Kali is a time bomb, but so is Hell. A lot of people... Has Meerkat oh. in a little bit of trouble? No, he played that very, very well. He wasn't... He was not caught as we thought, but Taya, who is caught out right now, Incon. Incon stuck in the ring. Is, well, more members of Cognitive Gaming here. Kiki does show up and provide some help with the Circle of Protection. That's going to do a lot more than it seems. A lot of damage reduction and a little bit of a heal to let Incon get oh. out of there, no problem. But Kabam! Being He's getting very a teleport in on though. Cyclone went straight over there with the teleport. Picks up the kill in response. Kabom 1v1 allied. But Cyclone made sure it didn't go down for free. 
Kabam with a great aggressive play, which is normally what we don't see out of Kabam. Not usually the aggressor. This time around, throwing Allied for a loop, and it winds up with a kill. Does, didn't realize the situation, I guess. We didn't get to see, unfortunately. But, I mean, this rotation from Cyclone is good to change the kill. But look what happened on the right-hand side now. Meerkat managed to get some free farm, bring down tier one. If you're going to rotate to the left side of the map, you're going to have to give something up. The tower goes down. Weaken might be able to find the kill. Knocked up in the air. Gets the silence out. Death Scythe needs to hit, and it does. But not there's enough not enough though. damage to put Meerkat into execute Mystical range. Mystical Mail. I mean, when you've got that against you, you're pretty safe. Cyclone mm -hmm. tries to go aggressive himself, steal away that purple, but which I think he was succeeded at there. Nobody else can really chase him down after that one. But going back to the Mystical Mail, one thing you generally see out of solo laners of days of old is I'm against a physical solo laner, I'm against a physical jungler, then I need to buy physical protection just to weather the storm and then start working on the items. And Mystical, well, is so effective anyway. It's one of the most... Well, it's one of the most ex expensive items in the game for a reason. <laughs> it just gives you lane dominance. I mean... Anytime you want to know more about it, just ask Meerkat. It, you purchase the item, and every single warrior who purchases it, their game changes. It's almost like an Agni from level 4 to level 5 is completely different. A warrior, sans Mystical Mail, and then with Mystical Mail is completely different. But the one issue with buying Mystical Mail sometimes is if you don't get it online quick enough, it takes a long time to get to that final stage from tier 2 to tier 3. Very expensive, 1450. Mm -hmm. It takes such a long time to do that that you can get yourself in a bad spot if you fall behind. But it's worked out well so far for Meerkat. I mean, working out swimmingly for Meerkat, he's pretty much tied with his opponent. He's behind 40 gold, but I'm not going to complain about that. Executioner and Ikaval being built for Kali. Very standard stuff coming out. Look all about the attack speed. However, he's look, gone into some physical protection himself. Mail of Renewal picked up just for the extra sustain on Thanatos. For the extra sustain, sure. It's really the story about the cooldown here, Hindu Man. Thanatos is a character that benefits from cooldown because early on, the base value of Death Scythe is enough to make you scary. And then Late game, people always talk about Thanatos falling off. He doesn't. He becomes an execute machine. And when you have a Meerkat, a DJ Pernicus, a, the best, and a Roar on these tanky gods, you want these executes. The best is going to be scary because the heals can throw off that execute. But if you are able to execute the execute, you're fine. Execute, you sound like a Pokemon right now. Talk about all that. <laughs> AFK, though, have grouped up around the golf here. They're ready to defend this one this time round in a good position to do so. No ultimate shoes just yet. Do what point out, Incon has gone for Pestilence here as well. Mm -hmm. So, really trying to reduce the healing of cognitive gaming. But you might get picked out here as Kabom got some good pressure on. Pulled the goal fury by a mistake, but left on side as well. Aggression onto weak and forcing him up. Maybe a look for the fight of the goal fury. In con down to about half HP, and half of the circle of protection is going to miss. Weekend comes crashing down on the backside. Now he's all by himself. Stun is good on the cognitive gaming. Two different members are stunned and unable to fight. Down comes the bird bomb. That's going to force Cyclone Spin into his ultimate. Allied claims the life of DJ Perdigas. One healer down for cognitive gaming. One remains. Best. Hell is being focused. The best needs to die of AFK. Want to come out on top of this, but cognitive able to turn around with the heels. Aurora jumps right on top of Kiki so cheeky and will send the mid laner packing. There goes Meerkat taking down Cyclone Spin and with only DJ Pernicus down, two different members of AFK are dead and Allied will fall to make that three credit to the best. Big play from Cognitive Gaming there. And AFK tried to reinitiate multiple times. You saw Cyclone get out with no HP, heal up after his ultimate and then dive the best because you saw it was his target. Doesn't find the kill, however, and the rest of the team fall down too. Weaken is here with Incon to try and defend, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop this goal fury right now. Aurora doing a good job of zoning. Absolutely not. Cognitive Gaming was able to take this. Oh, hold on. Hold that up. silence might change not. things, but Cognitive still able to take it. And they'll punish Weekend for his transgressions. Come but on, Cognitive Gaming able to take the Gold Fury with just a single kill. This time around, they get three and send two people away to lick their wounds. Of course, Cognitive Gaming is going to go take the Gold Fury. And with that, what was largely AFK's game, as you can follow the graphs, 3,596 gold by way of the red team, despite trailing by two kills. This was supposed to be one of those games. I mean, this is AFK, the number one team in NA, according to what everybody says, 15-1. and one. But right now, Cognitive Gaming, well, they're giving them a really good run for the money. They might be down on kills. But as you can see by the graphs and the goal furies, Cognitive Gaming are controlling this game. This is some of the most exciting smite we've seen. Not necessarily this game in particular, but just the overall bigger picture of smite here. We're seeing Six weeks in, there's a bye week. We saw some teams at LAN. There's six teams going to Super Regionals. Cognitive Gaming looked like a team that could not compete in week one, two, and three. Eager looked like a team that was just barely going to miss 
uh, re- regionals. Now, Eager is in second place, and if AFK wasn't 15 and 1, they'd be competing for first. And Cognitive. They're looking like a number one team. Well, now we've got one of these game situations as well. When you look at it, we can see a lot of defense coming out from the side of AFK, but it's physical defense, right? Cyclone Spin is Leaking. physical. He's the hyper carry. Across the way, however, the hyper carry over here is the Freya Kabam. No one's really building magical defense here. A little bit of ink on there, which is for the pestilence more than anything for the healing reduction. Mm -hmm. But the big issue is going to be Freya versus Carly. It's going to be a big battle this, I think, going into the late stage of this game. We're going to see a lot of attack speed mitigation if either team wants to take care of Kabam or Kali. That's really where those characters suffer. Runic shields and witch blades and enfeebling curses, those are what really spell destruction for Kali's and Freya and, and other gods that are really associated with attack speed. Cyclone spin getting aggressive here on a meerkat. Silence is strong. But he's a tanky son Mail of God. Renewal, mystical male. He's got too much physical. It's very hard to mm -hmm. bring down. Even with the amount of penetration those two assassins have on them, it's still not enough to bring down the tanky Wukong. But at the same time, what else <laughs> is there to do? You know, I guess let's go poke him a little bit. And he's regen most of it back up already. And so Sun Wukong. <laughs> mid lane, though. Trouble in the mid lane. Allied will backflip out of there. Basic attack coming out with the scythe onto the best. There's five members of Cognitive Gaming here in the middle, and they want to make things happen onto AFK. This shred protection from DJ Fennekes is That's so a big. That's big commit. In trouble. The ring is huge. Cataclysm will buy him a second. He will fall down, though. Circle of protection down from Kiki, but it's not going to do anything. And immediately, Cognitive back off. Meanwhile, the minions did the work for them in the mid lane. Smart stuff again from Cognitive Gaming. They are, they're trailing in kills, and the fact that they're leading in gold is because of the intelligence plays that they're making. They fight over in the jungle, which allows them to take out the tower uncontested. Wing goes from Kiki, they're still trying to pressure onto this tower. Big banish though onto Cyclone, they may try and focus that as Winkin dives in. Cyclone has to disengage. Winkin, very, very low on the backside, Not he able. will fall down. Valkyrie's discretion used by Kabom to get out of that. And meanwhile, the frontline three warrior combo of Cognitive are pushing AFK back. Stun is not good enough from Kiki, so cheeky, and Cognitive Gaming has created enough space that they're able to take this tier two at whatever pace they feel like. Phoenix just a little bit too aggressive for Cog, so they'll slink back into the jungle. And with Gold Fury down, they're just going to take every buff away from AFK Gaming. Unfortunately, that purple buff due to spawn soon, but not soon enough. They're swinging around to the left. They're tanky enough and sustaining just, just enough to it. backdoor this. Yeah, there's nothing preventing Cognitive from really doing this, as you said. They're tanky enough, but it's a sustain. Once somebody gets down, they get two heals on top of them. DJ and the best. You combine that with the Mail of Renewals, which will... Can we mouse over that? I know it's objectives for Gold Fury and Fire Giant. Mail of Renewal... Uh, Kill access on any god or objective? objective. I don't think it classes as an objective, unfortunately. Well, either way, Mail of Renewal able to provide sure so Gold much Fury and health. Fire Giant only. Because otherwise it'd be like jungle buff as well, right? <laughs> I need blue buff. I get some health. It's like double buff. No, no, no. Though. The only objective in the jungle is the speed buff. Well, for a jungler, that's true. For everyone. We saw yeah, Omega yeah. pick up. We saw Omega pick up the speed for buff. The and, for the best, and be blue buff, really. As a hell, you jungle on that blue. <laughs> Even though you play mid, you still want the blue over the red. More than likely. <laughs> very true. But for the time in mean, AFK, they, one thing I like about AFK, and this is a sign of a very top team and the top of NA for a reason, mm -hmm. is that even though they're at deficit right now, they're still not scared to push out of their base, oh, yeah. try and swing things back again. They're not out of this game at all, but the lead is starting to get bigger. It's a 6,000 gold lead by way of cognitive gaming, and as you said, Kali is a time bomb. She's level 20. She's got the chin size, the executioner, and the Ichabal. It doesn't matter if Cognitive Gaming is leading by 7K, 6K, or 60K. But this Kali is going to be able to shred. It's not on yet until the, the chase potential happens. The Fatalis. And the Fatalis is being built right now by Cyclone. When that hits is when Cyclone becomes a different monster, really. Meanwhile, across the way, however, the Fatalis is finished on Kabom here. He is on right, level 19, of but Rod of Tahuti, when that one hits home... It's going to change things, too. You know, it's like deja vu all over again. Rest in peace to the late Yogi Berra. The, I feel like we just explained this. The difference between the Fatalis on the Freya and the difference between the Fatalis on the Kali is sort of supplemental versus core. Freya is going to deal a lot more damage with the attack speed, so the Fatalis comes on early because the attack speed on the item actually amplifies her damage. The Fatalis on Kali, it will amplify the damage by way of attack speed because of the chin size, but it's more there as a supplement to help that chase 
as you said. It will just allow Kali to stay relevant and keep up with her target. Weakens on the right side of the map now. They don't realize that yet. Cognitive, they will do now as Meerkat did find him. The Golf we did just get reset and he's been pulled one more time, but now Weaken and Cyclone could turn up here with the teleport, but he's only rank one, so he's going to have to just run because there's no tier one towers. Gold Fury, 50% and leashed. Cognitive Gaming instead will look again at Incon. Stunned out for just a second. Weaken in the air looking for a target. Falls down, but Bomb takes out Incon. Weaken's going to escape out the left-hand side of your screen. The best will take out Kiki So Cheeky, and now Allied is going to be the subject. There's five people here. He ages his, and it'll save him, but just for a moment. The best gets two kills. Weaken will ult to safety. So will Ki I, Kali and both assassins find themselves safe in the, the bottom base. The way Cognitive Gaming are playing their team comp, I don't see a way back fire. in for AFK Gaming fire. right now. Well, yeah, it's a free fire giant for fire. sure. But I don't see a way back in for AFK Gaming right now. They're playing the comp correctly. What they're doing is they're letting Incon get in a position that you think is comfortable because he's like, hey, I'm Geb. But then the Cognitive protection shred, destroying Incon. followed by the three physicals, he's yep. just wrecking him. That's what's happened to Incon. He keeps getting stuck in the ring, and Cognitive not afraid to go for it. Weakened not afraid to go he's for it either. Death Scythe comes in. Not. Cognitive Gaming still able to steal the Fire Giant. And with two members of AFK here, Cognitive are going to make the pay. Weakened falls down in the hand of, we of Meerkat, and with the ultimate down from Kali, Best claims the life of Cyclone Spin. Five members of Cognitive Gaming have that Fire Giant around their waist, and they're going to head down the mid lane looking for more blood. It's not as fast as last game, but boy, is it interesting to watch it 29 minutes in. Cognitive Gaming are looking to try and give AFK their second loss of the season in only game one of this game, best of two. I Blinking don't think we'll see beautiful from this. Aurora. Avoids the stun from the Spirit Ball. He's going to go ahead and ring in busy. Incon and Kiki. But it's not about the kills. Keep it's it about busy. the objective. And the Phoenix Falls, and everybody got what they wanted. And well, guess where they're going now? Everybody on Cognitive got what they wanted. They did, and now they're going to go straight for the Tier 2. They've got the sustain and the tankiness of three frontline warriors to just continue to focus down trade out if they need to. But, you know, when you've got a Hell and you've got a Guan Yu, they could tank it even <laughs> one of them quite happily anyway. And now it's just two Phoenixes and one Tier 2 time. The left-hand side remaining for AFK Gaming to hold on to. Yeah, and you mentioned the word time bomb earlier, Hindu man, with respect to Kali. Well, my true time bomb is hell. If you get to about 22 minutes and hell is able to be hell, there's just not much you can do. Well, there's one thing we've not spoken about with the best is and his build, right? Mm -hmm. When she's in the Magi, we've got Breastplate of Valor cooldown reduction, survivability as well against these physicals, then Void Zone, reduce magical protections of the enemy team, A which allows Kabom to do more damage. Yep. Second of all, then we've got Rodeva Sleepius, increased healing. This is a supportive hell build. Well, this is not a I will 1v1 you as a hell. This is, oh, yeah. hey, me and my boys, we're never dying. The Rod of Asclepius works out so well because of the way that healing reduction and healing amplification with respect to the way the Rod of Asclepius works is additive. So when the weakening curses come out, when the pestilences and all the other items that are going to reduce healing come out, the Rod of Asclepius will just erase some of it. So that's the way that works, and that allows Hell to stay relevant with all the anti-heal. Take into account Heavenly Agility as well. I know they've only got, well, they've got two on the side. That's 30% uh -huh. increased healing as well, exactly. which comes on after Weakening Curse as well, if you pop mm -hmm. that one, and also removes the slow effect, which is kind of useful. <laughs> so very, very effective composition for Cognitive Gaming. They've made it work for themselves. AFK have got off to a flying start this game yeah. with the first kill on to Weaken. First couple of kills in the jungle were good, but... That was a concern for me was like when these teams come together, the mid game, when these guys get online, that's what Cognitive wanted to do is wait for the whole team to come together. And they've done that. Cognitive is, and, and Cognitive is winning this by trusting their team composition, understanding what their team does and why it's different from AFKs, and intelligent objective control. Like we said, they got a single kill and went for Gold Fury. And they did that a couple of times until they got to the point where they could trust in their Guan Yu and their Hell. And one of the most important things that I think we saw out of Cognitive Gaming was the ability to stay controlled after going, what was it, 8 to 1 with the kills? Yep. For me, for me, Cognitive Gaming, this game, they've outpicked and they've outplayed AFK with this composition. Mm -hmm. That's the be-all and end-all of it. I do not expect to see AFK let this happen again to them. Sure. It's one of those mistakes that you make, and thank God. Goodness, they're 15 and 1 and could afford to make a slip up like this. If they were mid table or potentially fighting for a bottom six spot, you know, top, you know, sneak sure. in, different story. But right now, they can lose this game, but they're trying to hold up. 
Aurora's going to go ahead and ring in the mid laner. Incon forced to shield himself as he's taken down to about 25% HP. The rest of AFK trying to push out Cognitive Gaming. And Meerkat gets a kill onto what's supposed to be the Hyper Carry Kali. Unable to really make that happen thus far is Cyclone Spin. Kiki So Cheeky will drop the Aegis. She'll drop the ult but he'll ultimately fall to the hand of the guy on the horse. DJ Pernicus gets credit for that kill. AFK, they have 60,000 gold. Their opponent is up 16,000 above them. The surrender vote has started, but it won't matter because the Titan is going to fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Cognitive Gaming give a second loss in the SPL season to AFK. And that's such a big boon for Cognitive Gaming, honestly, for me, because they're looking for wins. And when you see the AFK is your next opponent, a lot of people on paper, everybody pretty much would be like, AFK should win this one. Taking games off teams like that is what makes really good sides and gives you these shots to get yourselves in a decent standing. Exactly. And for Cognitive Gaming, they played a very smart game. I said a lot of it was sort of controlling the storm that AFK had for them. And that's exactly what we'll take a look at right here. We can starting things off with a bang very early on before the clock even starts. Minus 37 here as we go and we just see the five-man group up onto a single member. And down goes Cabal. Just a big group of us. Like, well, we've got Gresh, and if we can get a Scythe, we can find a kill. Really good pickup. So, our player of the game is going to be one of the healers allowed to keep everybody alive on the side of Cognitive Gaming. It's going to be the mid laner, the best, playing Hell with the 5, 1, and 10 KDA. And the big thing here is not necessarily the kills, it's not necessarily the assists, it's about the team presence and keeping his team alive. You can see that in his build and the way he positions himself in these fights for the most part. He's there to support and keep everybody topped upon health. <laughs> Tap them on health. I mean, that was a story, not just him, but also Guan Yu combining. They, that's really what set this team apart. It was all about the heals and the sustain. And so many times they were able to fight and just keep on going. After this fight, it's a shame because this is the highlight reel. We don't see the boring stuff after these kills, right? So yep. oh, all of these exciting kills come out. But the story of cognitive gaming is in the after effects, is in these fights happen and these kills happen. And then afterwards, DJ and the best heal everybody up and they go and take a tower. The and then afterwards, DJ and the best heal them up and they go take a, a gold fury. The funny thing is, when you watch through that highlight wheel of Hell there and the best playing him, he generally stayed in a light stance for the majority uh -huh. of that. The only times he switched to dark stance was when he was like, everybody's safe? <laughs> cool, I'll do a little bit of damage. Oh, wait, somebody got hurt, switch back to light. And for what it's worth, a lot of what we saw out of the dark stance was the protection steal. Mm -hmm. Protection uh, steal, a <laughs> little bit of poke when he can, and then straight back to light stance yep. again. Really good work from Cognitive and the best. So we're going to...